What's up guys, it's Jim Tay and today I'll be talking about new projects. The 10 upcoming new launches to look out for in the second half of 2021. For this video, I'll focus on the location of the new launch to talk about some of the nearby competitors in its location, tell you about the break-even price, and I'll also be sharing with you one good and one not so good point about the project that I feel. Before diving right in, may I ask for a request to help me pause the video and click the like button. It really helps me a lot and encourages me very much to make similar videos for you. Please do hit subscribe if you've not yet done so and share this video to any of your friends. I'm sure this video would be very useful to anyone who's looking at the new launch market for the second half of this year. Without further ado, let's dive right into the first project. The first condo that I'll be talking about is actually one that you may have already heard of. I've actually done a very recent video on it. It's none other than Passeries 8. Passeries 8 is launching this very weekend. If you take a closer look at this location, you'll notice that Passeries 8, there are a cluster of condos around the south, southwestern area. However, if you really draw a circle around 500 meters around the MRT station, you'll notice that there are only two condominiums. 500 meters, I would say, is still a reasonable walking distance that people would take to the MRT. Then there are only two condos, Coco Palms and East Vale. A quick look at the transaction prices in the last six months of these two condominiums, and you can see quite clearly that East Vale is quite a bit cheaper as it's a little older, whereas Coco Palms is the most recent new launch in the Passeries region, and prices there are actually going at about 1,002 on average to the highest 1,400 per square feet. Passeries 8 has a break-even price of about 1,230 per square foot per plot ratio. And as it's already so close to launch, the guide prices have already been released and you can get units at this new integrated development that has a lease start date from 2021 with per square foot prices for the larger units going from as low as 1,400 per square feet. One good thing that I like about this project of course, is that it's an integrated development. Being an integrated development, the size and the scale of the property as well would absolutely transform the Passeries region, which for a long time had only white sands as the only shopping mall in the area. One bad thing though is relating to the major transformation that people have been talking about when selling the uh, Passeries 8 integrated development, and that is the Cross Island Line. Cross Island Line, if you know about it, is actually still a long way to go before it completes. Almost towards the end of this decade, which means about another 10 more years. It's a long time for a transformation to take place, and in between, you could have some construction disrupting living at Passeries 8. The second condo I'll be moving to is the Water Gardens at Canberra. The Water Gardens actually opened for preview last weekend, but is now on hold due to the latest change in the uh, COVID-19 measures by our Singapore government. So how is it like around the water gardens at Canberra? If you take a look at the nearby 500 meters around the Canberra estate, which is a new MRT line that was just completed towards the end of 2019, you'll find that there are about six condominiums in the area, and many of them were in fact executive condominiums. Pricing-wise, condos here are actually quite attractively priced, with the older completed ECs like the brownstone going at about 1,000 per square feet. The condominiums, private, fully privatized condominiums like eight courtyards going at about 1,002 per square feet, and of course, Park Canberra and Province going at about 1,001 per square feet. Water Gardens at Canberra has already released its guide prices and it's going to come in at about 13 XX PSF, which is only a slight premium to the existing private condominium that is already selling at a high point of about 1,002 per square feet. The break even of this parcel is about 1,224 per square feet per plot ratio, which means selling at 13 PSF, the developer is barely making any profits on those units. The one good thing that I like about Water Gardens at Canberra is that it is a fully privatized condominium compared to the other new options around the area, which are both executive condominiums. The Water Gardens at Canberra gives prospective owners the options and flexibility to exit early if the market situations permit and it's the right time for them to exit. The one thing bad about the Water Gardens at Canberra is that there is a plot of land beside it, the condominium called the Commodore. There is a risk that depending on the performance of the Water Gardens at Canberra, the developer may choose to tweak the, uh, the sales process and their sales strategy that might be detrimental to investors who decided to enter at Water Gardens at Canberra. 
The third project on this list is the first in the core central region and that's Klimp Kenhill. Klimp Kenhill has also opened for preview but however has also been put on hold at this moment. Klimp Kenhill, if you look at the location, it's located along Kenhill Road. It has a very nice gold facade which is going to suit its theme of being a luxurious boutique development and that area if you're aware is home to many many such developments as you can see in this map of the 500 meter radius around Klim Kane Hill. You can look at pricing in this area true to its prestige being in District 9, the most expensive area in Singapore. You can see that prices here goes up to about 6,000 for the Eden which was which was sold recently, the entire building. And then most of the range is around high 2,000 to 3,000 per square feet. Klim Kane Hill has an estimated break-even price of 3,315 per square feet per plot ratio. One good thing about this project, besides its goal for site, which I really like, is that it's freehold status and in District 9. Together, it confers a sense of prestige that I can't say the same for all projects out there. One bad thing is that, again, Guide prices are out and it's not cheap to own a unit there. Two bedroom entry prices start from close to $3 million. Moving on, the fourth project on my list and the only executive condo. Yes, Park Greenwich. On first look, Park Greenwich may look like it's an Ulu place of Singapore, but I can tell you that there's actually quite a lot of demand in that area. Let's look at the condos nearby. Only three condos. And when you zoom down into pricing, you'll see why I say that there's a lot of demand in this area. Because look at the topiary. In the last six months alone, since achieving its MOP, it has got 83 transactions, which is really testament to the healthy volume and demand for homes in this area. The break-even price for this EC is about 1,000 per square feet. And guide prices are not out yet, but like all previous ECs that have been launching recently, I would expect it to go for sale at about 1,100 per square feet on average. One good thing I like about this project is definitely its executive condominium status. Being the lowest entry price into any private development in Singapore, executive condominiums are always attractive to home buyers. Of course, if you qualify. And for the one bad point, I have to go back to its location. It has to be something that you are comfortable with and you do understand the area because there's only a bus connection and it's quite, I would say, uh, quite a distance to walk to the nearest LRT station. And right beside it is also an entire, uh, a big industrial hub that is still undergoing construction which might give noise pollution to that area as well. The next project I want to talk about is Bartley View. This is a very interesting project. Why? Because just take a look at the land plot. It's kind of like a triangle shape and it also borders the very busy Bartley Viaduct. So what's so interesting about this project? Take a closer look at the location and you'll see five condominiums nearby, newest of which is Botanic at Bartley, which achieved its TOP in 2019 and transacting at about 1,600 per square feet today. The break-even price of Bartley View is about 1,525 per square feet per plot ratio and early signs have shown that the developer may be looking to price about 1,008 per square feet. One good thing about this project is that in terms of comparison between the upcoming launches in 2021, Bartley View would most probably be the most competitively priced fringe project that you can find in Singapore. One bad thing is that I'm personally quite familiar with the Bali area, having my own clients there and tenants there staying as well. And there's a general feeling of um, lack of amenities in that area. So something that residents and tenants of the area have to deal with in future. The next project is one that I'm personally most excited about is of course, Canning Hill Pierce. Canning Hill Pierce is the only integrated project that's going to have two residential blocks, service apartments, hotel, as well as a commercial podium right along the Singapore River. If you take a look around the location of Canning Hill Pierce, you'll find that most of the condominiums are not in the direct vicinity and they are more towards the left side, the western area, River Valley Road. Why? That's because Canning Hill Pierce is considered to be in District 6, the Clark Key and City Hall area where there has only been in fact three private condos there and the last one has not been seen in 10 years. If you look at the prices of the condos around this area, you'll notice that most of them are almost 10 years old at least, with prices going up to 2,300 per square feet. There's no clear break-even price on this project as it's a joint venture between CDL and Capital Land, which came about following a trio of transactions. I have the news article here, which you can take a look and read if you want to find out roughly what's the cost of the project. 
One good thing I like about this project is definitely its location. Where else in Singapore can you find a residential property that's directly connected to a park? An MRT station and also has greenery views, Singapore river views, CBD skyline views, and also located in one of the most central, most happening locations in Singapore. One bad, however, is that true to its name, the Clark Key, Robertson Key, Boat Key, and this area in general is known to be a happening place with a lot of activity. It can be quite busy, quite crowded, and noisy. On to the seventh project in this list, and we head towards the east to look at Leaf at MB. Leaf at MB is the end block of the former Katong Park Towers. East Coast is an area that is home to all types of condos from small boutique ones to large resort style like developments. Look at the 500 meters around and you'll see that there are numerous condos around. And when you look at the transaction prices, you'll see that they are all freehold in this area with prices from about high of the 1,000 per square feet to more than 2,005 per square feet for the newer projects. Katong Park Towers has a break-even price of 1,889 per square feet per plot ratio. For this project in particular, I want to tell you about the one bad point first. And you'll see why. Well, it's quite obvious Katong Park Towers or live at MB, so to speak, the new project's name, is going to be the only 99 years development in an area that's mostly freehold projects. However, the good thing is that there has been strong track record of good price appreciation from another development that shared similar characteristics, being the only 99 years, in a sea of freehold condominiums, and that's seaside residences. So would it be possible that you'll see similar results from Live at MB? That's definitely an upside strong point to be looking out for. The eighth project on this list, we head over to Call Central Region again at Bukit Timah Road for Perfect 10. With a name like this, does the project deserve full marks? Let's take a look at the location. Again, like East Coast, the Bukit Timah region is home to many different types of condos. You can see easily populates the list in the 500 meter radius. Looking at the transactions closely, however, you'll find that for the more expensive condominiums, they go about 2,000 to 2,005 per square feet for the resale transactions, and the new ones are at the high of 2,000 all the way up to almost 3,400 per square feet. The break-even price of what was the former city towers is at 2,568 per square feet per plot ratio. One good I like about this project is its accessibility to Bukit Timah Road. It's not deep in and it's very easy to get to the main road and of course if you don't mind me adding another one is the area is famous for schools and perfect 10 is within one kilometers to scgs and acs primary school the bad point is that there has been a poor track record of condominiums in this area where you have developments like sloan the height and juniper hill not having exactly strong sales. We're down to the last two projects of this list of the 10 new launches. We're heading back to the east to Ember C, which is a freehold project by Far East, the largest private homegrown developer in Singapore. Similarly, like Live at MB and Perfect 10, you'll find many projects around the 500 meter radius. And pricing wise is also very, very similar with prices of the older resale properties going from about high 1,000 per square feet to the newer condos such as Amber Park, coastline residences going from about 2,006 per square feet to even up to close to 3,000 per square feet. Amber Sea is really interesting because Far East actually bought the property 10 years ago in 2011 via the M block of the Amber Glades and they have actually kept it for rental for the last 10 years since. If you think about it that way and you look back at what price they purchased it for, you'll find that they actually purchased the land for about 1,066 per square feet per plot ratio only. With the break even being at about 1,500 per square feet, even if you take into account inflation, let's say it's 1,800 per square feet, they are still able to price it competitively. And that for me is the one good thing to look out for in this project, where if you're lucky and the far is somehow decide to price it attractively, you'll probably be seeing the most attractive freehold launch in the East. And one bad thing is that at the end of the day, Embassy is only a small plot of land. How small? It's not even 4,000 square meters, meaning it's an apartment status, not even considered a condominium. With that kind of land size, it'd be interesting to see what Far East can come up with in their project specifications. Finally, the last one on my list, the 10th, did I say 10 condos? The last one I'll be talking about is actually a strata landed development and that's Belgravia 
Ace. Belgrava Ace is located towards the Yochukang area of Singapore. And if you look at the 500 meters surrounding, you'll see that this area has actually had many landed redevelopments with properties on the east, such as Luxus Hills, going through many, many, many multiple phases of launch. And nearby, you have Nim Collection and the previous Belgrava Greens and Belgrava Villas. It's tricky comparing prices of the landed properties as one can differ quite greatly from another. So I'll be skipping that and talk about one good thing about the project, which is really the additional um, landed supply in Singapore. The landed market is really, really heating up where there is not enough supply and there's still a lot of demand to purchase these plus size homes for family owned stay. With that, this is really a good addition to the market to see whether it can help to ease some of the supply and demand imbalances. The bad thing, however, is that it's a strata landed property, which recently I would say has become more and more popular with buyers. However, it's still a more niche pool and may not appeal to the wider public who might still prefer traditional landed houses. Well, so that's a wrap of the 10 launches of 2021 second half to look out for. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have an article that summarizes this as well as maybe some couple of additional points here and there. Click the link in the, in the description to head over to my website to check out that article. If you've not yet done so, please give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe. Subscribe helps me very, very much. Share this video with some of your friends who are looking out to buy property. I'm sure it'll be helpful for anyone who's looking to buy a new property in the second half of this year. Once again, my name is Jim Tay. If you have any questions on the presentation, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. I'll do my best to reply you. Um, yep, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.